Hi, I'm going to show you how to set up a multi-page document in Clip Studio Paint. Clip Studio Paint is an application for macOS and for Windows. I'm on a Mac and the application is targeting people who um, create comics and manga and uh, comic books, etc. So um, that's the reason why you get multi-page capabilities in Clip Studio Paint. But the interface isn't as user-friendly or, let's say, intuitive as it could be. And that's why you can probably uh, use a helping hand. And that's what I'm going to try give you with this screencast. So without further ado, let's start. Right, we are now in Clip Studio Paint and the first thing that I recommend you to do is to set in your preferences the color conversion. So, the RGB profile. If you have a later iMac, then you have a what is called a P3 display. A P3 display is a somewhat higher dynamic range display than common monitors and it covers the whole of the Adobe RGB profile or color space. Um, so you can leave this at Adobe RGB if you don't or you're um, going to export a lot to for example the web then you're better off with sRGB and if you are going to only uh, use and export to other Apple displays, then you can use Apple RGB or display even. Your CMYK profile is important because it will allow you to export your work to a print service provider or a print shop and you should consult with your printer which one you need to use, which profile. You have two profiles, which for Europe at least, Europe ISO coated Fogra 27 or Euro scale uncoated version 2. There's no other European um, profile um, for uh, CMYK printing. For example, we already have Fogra 39. Well, this is not supported by Clip Studio Paint. Your rendering intent can be changed when you are going to be viewing your color conversion. Um, but I recommend you leave it at relative colorimetric. When you are going to be proofing your document, you should change this to absolute colorimetric. Click OK and now we can start with a new multi-page file. So here we have the um, new document dialog. Starting from the left you have an icon for an illustration and that is not a comic book or a fanzine. Then the second uh, icon from the left is a comic. The third is a fanzine. The fourth is all settings for comics and fanzines and that's the one I'm going to e be explaining to you. So the preset is for example custom but you can select one here and as you can see there's a lot of choice uh, including for commercial issues with the bleed of 5mm, monochrome etc. But we are going to be choosing a four color which means that you get a canvas of 257 uh, uh, to a ratio of 257 pixels uh, against 364 height you can change width and height and then you get a landscape um, document which you can see here it changes the resolution here is 350 you can go up to 1200 but if you're only 
going to be outputting four monitors. There's also 72 DPI. Retina is not supported, which is uh, 96 DPI. Then you can set a paper color. If you don't, there's no paper color, it's transparent. Um, your paper color can change, of course. You can select one here from HLS or HSV or else from a color set which includes a lot of uh, color sets but no Pantone and you can set a template normally this is not set and this is not set either but you can set a template and indeed here for the canvas which uh, covers all your internal pages you can have for example three rows four frames etc and here in this dialog you get a lot of uh, preset frames these frames are masked and for example here we have four frames and two strips and in each of these blocks you will be able to draw uh, a, a one scene of your comic um, to the right you have the cover page you don't need to set a cover page but usually you will want to do that and you can set another expression color as it is called here which is actually the color you're going to use and it's uh, useful to know that uh, clip studio paint internally uses rgb color so in this case you just get the choice between color gray and monochrome but internally, internally it's all done in RGB here again you can set a paper color you can set a cover page layout so if you choose this one then you have a spine to set if you choose this one you're actually going to be using only a cover page and a one a4 page instead of a real book as it were so this is really the cover as you can find them on um, printed comics that you buy in a comic store this one is something that you might choose if you're not going to be um, uh, hiring a service provider or a printer so leave it like that and then you can set a template and the template can be the same as before usually in my opinion you'll be um, using for your cover page a one frame template right and then you have the manga draft settings so we are now in an A4 we have A4 set here the bleed is what gets cut off um, in between the edge of the page and the margin so uh, your printer will be cutting that off um, and you can set a default border which is the inner size now here we have custom so we are going to change that to a4 and then you can set your size either the size of the inner size here which is an a4 so the full page which is impossible to print by the way uh, so you should actually set this to a lower value but it's perhaps uh, easier to set the margin and then you can have a margin for example of um, two the bottom two as well the gutter which is uh, in the spline area you have a bit of uh, more space because you need to be able to read from the inside of the book and people don't like usually people don't like to lay out the book flat because that breaks the spine and then you got a four edge to be very honest with you i'm i'm absolutely in the dark what a four edge is but if we go back to set size that's a y offset so a y offset is along the vertical um vertical axis which means that you might set um, an offset for your borders on the vertical axis 
which doesn't make much sense to me, but uh, I could be wrong. That's something that you should discuss with your printer, in my opinion. Then there's also a safety margin if you want to set that. That's a sort of um, extra margin that you need to stay within uh, to be sure that nothing falls outside of it, which is important. Then you can have your fanzine uh, pr uh, data printed and your multiple pages can appear as four page in this case there's a number of eight pages uh, these can appear as four pages um, next to it next to each other for example page four and five will be printed on an a4 but next to each other but if you click the spread then you can also set a, a crop mark to align with a gap that you set yourself and a spread means that you're going to be printing out your A4 comic book on A3 pages or paper or sheets. So that's a different way of working. And of course you can set a left binding and a right binding. Then the story information is a bit of metadata so you can have a story name and decide where you want to put that name. You can have a number of stories or not, printed out I mean. The subtitle, you can print that out. You can have the author printed. You can have a page number printed and a starting number for the page number. And then there's the folio. You can have a, a folio is uh, the actual page number printed at the outside edges of your comic book so not in the uh, spline area um, here you can also set a start number you can set a color black or white you can have edges um, you can have a top top inside bottom inside bottom outside blah 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 and you can have a blind folio as well and a blind folio is um, usually uh, a page number that does not does not appear as a printed number but is uh, present so if for example if you save blind folio on page uh, 2 then you won't see the number on page 2 but the numbering will keep going on on page 3 with 3 and not start over again okay so when you're happy with your settings you click OK and you have your pages made and what you get is the page uh, page manager and uh, from here you can start drawing your art